In this video, we will come up with a solution to the longest common substring problem using dynamic programming. Here is the problem definition. We are given two input strings S1 and S2. Let's assume that S1 has length n and S2 has a length of m. The goal is to find the length of the longest substring that is common to both S1 and S2. So let's take an example to understand this. Let's say our S1 is, is this uh, in string AB, ABC and S2 is the string BA, BCA, right? So there are many substrings that are common to both S1 and S2. For example, this AB is, is in S1 and AB is also part of S2, right? Similarly, uh, BC is a part of S1 and BC is also a part of S2, right? Likewise, uh, there are many common substrings to S1 and S2. However, the goal is to find the longest common substring and which in this case is uh, this substring BA, BC, BA, BC, right? So this, uh, this substring is common to both S1 and S2 and it has the longest length. So the length of the longest common substring in this case is 4 and the substring is BA, BC. Like many dynamic programming problems, the longest common substring problem can also be solved as a search problem or an optimization problem. The search space consists of all common substrings between the input strings S1 and S2. And our search objective or the optimization objective is among all the common substrings between input strings S1 and S2, we want to find the one, the common substring with the maximum length. Now, how do we search the search space of all common substrings between S1 and S2? So here is the plan. We will divide the original input search space S into several smaller subspaces. Let's say Q1, Q2 and so on up to QK such that if we take a union of uh, Q1, Q2 and so on up to all these search spaces up to QK, we'll get the original search space S back. Okay. So next we will search each of these subspaces for the longest common substring inside them. So let's say the, the length of the longest common substring inside Q1 is L1, inside Q2 is L2 and so on up to LK. The final answer that we are looking for is basically the value L, which is the maximum of all of these values L1, L2, so on up to LK. So this is the high level plan. Now the question is, how do we first, at the, in the first place, how do we come up with this division of the original search space S into Q1, Q2 and so on up to QK? Here is one possible way of doing that. Let's assume our input strings are S1 and S2. String S1 goes from 1 to N and S2 goes from 1 to M. A search space S of I comma J, this subspace can be defined as consisting of all the common substrings that start in uh, S1 at index I. Let's say this is some index I and in S2 it starts at some index J. Let's say this is index J. If we divide our original search space using this strategy, then we'll have several subspaces S11, S12 and so on all the way to S and M. According to our plan, inside each of these subspaces, we'll be finding the longest common substring. So let's say the longest common substring belong to S11 is L11, S12 is L12 and so on up to uh, L and M. The final answer would be the maximum of all of these uh, longest values that we have found inside respective subspaces. So we have divided our original search space into many smaller subspaces S of I comma J such that this search space S of I comma J consists of all common substrings that start at index I in S1 and at index J in S2. So the next question is how do we search each of these subspaces to find the longest common substring belonging to them. We will be using recursion to do that, to search the subspaces. Let's assume that strings S1, 1 to N and S2, these are global variables, 1 to M. Let's define a recursive function LCSSI, J, where LCSS stands for longest common substring. This recursive function returns the length of the longest common substring between S1 and S2 such that the substring starts at index i in S1 at index j in S2. Let's start with the base case of recursion. S1 has length n and S2 has length m. So what if i is, is greater than n or if j is greater than m? Even if, if one of them is greater than uh, the length of the string, it simply means that one of the strings is either null or has been completely passed. If one of the strings is null, 
the longest common substring between the two strings cannot be greater than zero. So that's the base case over here. If i is greater than n or j is greater than m, we simply return zero. Else, we compare the characters at index i and j in S1 and S2. Let's assume these characters match. Let's say S1 was storing a character a and S2 is also storing character a at, a at their indexes i and j respectively. So in this case, the length of the longest common substring that start at index i in S1 and j in S2 would be simply 1 plus the length of the longest common substring that start at index i plus 1 in S1 this is i plus 1 and index j plus 1 in S2. So that is the else if condition here in the recursive code. However, what if the characters at index i and j of S1 and S2 do not match? So let's say S1 was storing character A but S2 was storing character B. They do not match. So clearly there is no common substring that starts at index i in S1 and index j in S2. Right? So the length of the longest common substring in this case would simply be 0. So that's the last return statement here. So that is how we will search each of the subspaces to find the length of the longest common substring that start at index i and i comma j in S1 and S2 respectively. Recall, this is a dynamic programming algorithm. In many dynamic programming algorithms, if you simply come up with a purely recursive solution, the complexity could be exponential. And that is simply because the recursion keeps doing the same work over and over again. To avoid the repeated work, we define a table and store the results of the intermediate steps in a table. So the next thing we are going to do here is define a table. Recall that we have two input strings S1 and S2. S1 has length n and S2 has length m. So our table must have at least n rows and m columns. And that is simply because in our subspaces, this uh, S of i comma j, i can take values all the way from 1 to n and j can take all the values from 1 to m. However, from the recursion, recall that in the base case, we are allowing the value of i to be greater than n and the value of j to be greater than m. And therefore, the minimum number of rows in this table should be n plus 1 and the minimum number of columns in this, uh, in this table will be m plus 1. So this is our table. It has n plus 1 rows and m plus 1 columns. Now, what does each of the entry in this table store? So let's say this is our i comma jth entry in the table. This will store the return value of lcss i comma j. That is the length of the longest common substring between S1 and S2 such that the substring starts at index i in S1 and, in, and at index j in S2. So essentially each entry i comma j in this table is storing the length of the longest common substring in the search space S, uh, S of i comma j. So how do we find the longest common substring between S1 and S2, the global max? Well simple, simply scan through all the entries in the table and the entry i comma j any entry i comma j in the table that has the maximum value is the optimal value that we are looking for all right so we have defined the table and we know that the optimal value that we are looking for is the maximum value stored in this table so the next question is how do we fill this table recall that the i comma jth entry in this table is simply the return value of the recursive call lcss i comma j and from the recursive code, recall that to compute LCSS i comma j, we need the return value of LCSS i plus one comma j plus one. Essentially, what that means is to fill out the value here at i the, at i comma j th entry in this table, we need the value at this i plus one th row and this j plus one th column, right? So, which is basically this entry over here. Therefore. Because of this dependency, the table must be filled bottom up, right to left. So let's start filling this table by the sentinel, sentinel values. So recall that if the value of i was greater than n or the value of j was greater than m, then we always return 0. Right? So what that means is this last row is going to be all zeros and this last column over here is also going to be all zeros. So essentially that is what these first two for loops are doing in this code. They are filling out all zeros in the sentinel values. And this next nested for loop over here, this is filling out all the intermediate values bottom up right to left. Note that we are not making any recursive calls here. 
we know that to compute this i comma jth entry we need the entry at i plus 1 comma j plus 1 in the table so simply check if the ith character in string s1 is the same as the jth character in s2 then t of i comma j is simply 1 plus t of i plus 1 comma j plus 1 otherwise t of i comma j is simply 0 if the ith character in s1 and the jth character in s2 are not the same what that essentially means is there is no common substring between s1 and s2 that starts at index i in s1 and j in s2 once the table is filled out we just need to scan through the table and return the maximum entry in the table that is our answer let's take an example to understand how exactly this dynamic programming table would fill out let's assume for this example that our input string s1 is a b a b c and this s2 is b a b c a both the input strings have a length of 5 and therefore our table should be 5 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 6 by 6 as shown here in this slide let's start by filling out the sentinel values so for i equal to 6 and j equal to 6 these rows and columns should all be 0 as we have seen so the sentinel values here these are all zeros next we'll fill out this table bottom up right to left so basically we'll start with row number 5 uh, we'll fill out 5 comma 5 then 5 comma 4 5 comma uh, 3 and so on right this way and similarly next we'll uh, after that we'll fill out row number 4 starting from the right again uh, 5 comma 5 5 comma 4 and so on so here are our two strings s1 and s2 index i is iterating on s1 and j is iterating on s2 these are the, uh, the strings and the indexes are on top right this is 1 2 3 4 5 this this 1 2 3 4 5 for s2 so let's start with uh, this 5 comma 5 so basically i is 5 and j is also 5 so according to our algorithm we'll simply check whether the characters at these locations they are equal or not if they are equal then we go into the recursive case if they're not equal then we'll simply return a 0 now in this case a and c are not are not the same character so we'll simply return a 0 here so next we'll decrement j by 1 so now uh, j is pointing to 4 we compare these two characters uh, at index 4 s24 and s15 and they are the same right so we go to the recursive case here so we want to figure out the value here at 5 comma 4 uh, and and that would be simply 1 plus lcss i plus 1 co comma j plus 1 so essentially uh, this would be 1 plus whatever value is uh, already present at here the diagonally the diagonal the diagonally next value in the table which is zero in this case so this basically simply becomes one continue in a similar fashion let's decrement j once again so now j points to three so we are filling out this entry five comma three uh, as b and c are not the same this will simply be zero decrement j again so now j points to uh, two which is a a and c are not the same so this entry becomes zero now now again decrement j once one more time b and c are not the same character so this entry is also zero now we will work on the fourth row starting from the rightmost location here so this is basically i is equal to 4 j is equal to 5 so we have decremented this i by 1 so now i is pointing to b and j is is again reset to the rightmost location which is a here now b and a are not the same characters so therefore this entry becomes zero continue in a similar fashion decrement j to 2 a and b are not the same characters so this be, this entry becomes zero now again decrement this uh, this by one so b and b are the same characters so this entry will become one plus the entry here the diagonal cell which is zero so this remains one now we will work on the third row so uh, so update this i to point to a decrement this by one and j is reset to point to uh, this and en entry five now a and a are the same characters therefore this entry will become 1 plus this diagonal cell which is 0 so this remains 1 now decrement j it points to c c and a are different so this becomes 0 now again decrement j uh, we come to b b and a are, are different so this entry becomes 0 again decrement j uh, come to it points to a a and a are same so this will become 1 plus whatever here in the diagonal cell which is 2 so that becomes 3 again decrement j we come to b b and a are different so this entry becomes zero now we'll work on the second row so decrement i it points to b now reset j points to a again 
now a and b are different so this entry becomes zero now again decrement j points to c c and b are different so this entry becomes zero again decrement b and b are the same so this entry becomes one plus the diagonal entry here which is zero so this becomes one again decrement j we point to a a and b are different so this entry becomes zero decrement j b and b are the same so this entry becomes one plus this diagonal value which is three so this becomes four now finally we'll work on the top row decrement i one more time so i points to index one and reset j so j again points to a a and a are same so this entry becomes one plus this diagonal value which is zero so this becomes one decrement j is points to c c and a are different so this remains zero decrement j again b and a are different so this remains zero again decrement j so a and a are the same so this entry becomes one plus the diagonal value here which is one so this is two and finally once again we decrement j b and a are different so this entry remains zero the length of the longest common substring that we are looking for is basically the maximum entry in this table right so if we go through this table we find that the maximum entry is four so the length of the longest common substring is four and where does it start we simply need to we, we either can go to index two i equal to two in s1 which is basically here and read the four characters b a b c or another way of finding this is go to j equal to one in, in in s2 so in s2 if you go here this is j equal to one and read the four characters b a b c this is the longest common substring that we are looking for let's finally quickly talk about the complexity of our algorithm recall that the complexity of a dynamic programming algorithm is given by the size of the table multiplied by the time it takes to fill out each entry in our case the table size is n plus one multiplied by m plus one there are n plus one rows and m plus one columns and it takes constant amount of time to fill each table entry therefore the complexity of our algorithm would be o of n plus 1 multiplied by m plus 1 multiplied by some constant c which is basically the same as big o of m into n this is the complexity of our algorithm thank you for watching i hope this was helpful if you would like to see more such videos please subscribe to the channel